So I'm making a top for a five gallon tank. This is, uh, I got this polycarbonate sheeting, comes I think two foot by eight foot from the home centers. And as I recall, it was about 40 bucks, but I can get a few lids out of it and they're gonna be cheaper than the glass lids at Petco or PetSmart. So what I've done, I've made a couple marks here and down here. And I'm lucky enough to have one of these drywall T-squares. So I'm gonna put it on, put my mark, I want this side here. So I'm gonna put the cut on the other side. I've got a fresh blade here. So, and it's not the easiest thing. You gotta make several passes. So I've got it tight here. So I've got a good, hopefully a good uh, perpendicular cut to this. So I'll have a parallel side, cause this one I cut, this side I had already cut once for another tank. Uh, with this T-square. So these two sh sides should run parallel. So what I'm going to do is just lightly score it. And then again, and again, you don't want to give yourself an appendectomy while you're doing this. And again, get back in that same slot. I'm gonna push through the end here. I think the other end I've already cut through. And I think I got it one more pass because it's broken free back here in my way. So, let's see, just a little bit left. There it is, nice clean cut. So I've still got to cut the, the, uh, the length here. Let me go get a measurement, because I didn't do that. Okay, so I've measured it. And this time I'm cutting, I'm gonna turn this around, so I'm protecting the side I want. Um, and this cut time I'm cutting, the length of the cell, so it'll be an easy cut versus across the cells. One thing you want to do, probably cut them just a hair loose so uh, um, so you don't have to try and trim this stuff later because that's not easy. And there it is. That should fit the five gallon, so we'll peel this off. wherever it comes off from. So it's pretty, pretty good. Keeps it sort of protected. There we go. Now I'm also going to uh, just make an arbitrary cut the width anyway across here because I'm gonna make a, just let it hinge up. So I'm just kind of picking a spot that looks comfortable. And I'm not oh it and I yeah I got a little wild on me there. And then I'm also going to pick a spot here. I'm going three cells in, not too far. And I'm just cutting between the ribs. And then I'm going to take that out. Probably don't need to, but I'm going to. Flip it over to the other side. That little notch should be good enough for uh, the airline. Let's go see. Yes. And so it's not a total waste. 
I saved the scraps and then cut out one of the little rectangles and trim all the excess off so I just you know so it's kind of clean and I end up with something like that a little bit of super glue I hope it's dry it's not really dry yet I just put I use gel to clear the liquid dries faster I think so the gel will but there it is that's it so I'm gonna leave that back and I'm gonna take this off for right now and I'm still acclimating I need to come up with a name for her, don't I? Or do I? Probably not. This uh, female well-buried Amano shrimp. Um, and what I'm doing there is just uh, putting a little water in. And when it starts to overflow at the tip, then I'm done. And uh, I'll put her in. And I threw an algae wafer in there. Uh, there's some sediment from, from plants that were in there. And then when she is buried, I will pull her out. I'm sorry, after she drops her eggs, I will pull her out and uh, start uh, adding uh, instant ocean salt to get up to the appropriate salinity for, for the, uh, the shrimp larvae. A pretty easy way to make a lid.